This is section 6.3, Volumes by Cylindrical Shells. So the content objective, the only one for this section, is to find volumes of solids of revolution using the cylindrical shell method. In section 6.2, we learned how to find volumes of solids of revolution using the washer or disk method. So in this particular objective, we will be using the same solids, except we will be slicing it differently. So when we're done, I'd like you to be able to discuss the similarities and differences between this disk washer method that we learned in section 6.2 and the cylindrical shell method that we're learning today. So again, courtesy of Geometer Sketchpad and Audrey Weeks, we have something that can help us see what is going on. Just to recap, we remember with section 6.2, that we would choose a representative slice that was perpendicular to what we were rotating around. And when we rotated, we got that disc or that washer, depending on whether the slice was touching the axis of revolution or not. Well, what's new with today is instead of having that strip be perpendicular to the axis of revolution, it's going to be parallel to the thing that we are rotating around. So this time when we revolve, instead of giving, getting a flat washer, we're going to get what is called a cylindrical shell. And if I were to move this strip closer to the axis of revolution or further away from the axis of revolution, I would end up getting nested shells where we had one inside the other. Whereas with this one, as we move the strip through the region, we get the stacked washers that are next to each other. So this, when we have a whole bunch of them, it will look like a stack of pennies or a loaf of bread. Whereas with the shells, it will look like one of those nested Russian dolls. We will have a bunch of concentric shells that all together fill up the entire region. If we think now about the formulas and recall that when we want to find the volume of an entire region we have to sum up the volumes of individual slices, an infinite number of them, we can remember that the volume formula for the washer method would be the volume of this one slice added up over the various, various values of x that x can pass through. So if you recall, we had a pi times the big radius squared times the thickness. That gave us the volume of the entire disk. And then we subtracted out the disk that was chopped out from the center, which would be pi times the little radius squared. So we did a bunch of these in section 6.2. Now what we want to do is we want to think about the volume of this. And what makes this a little trickier is that the thickness here was on the thickness of the cylindrical shape, whereas here the thickness is along the edge. So one of the ways that you can think about this is by slicing it open and unrolling it. When you do that, you get something that is an awful lot like a piece of paper. So you have a very, very thin, thin width here, which would be your D whatever. And then the volume will be the area of that rectangle times the thickness. So if we think about the area of that, one piece is going to come from this height. And then the other piece will come from the circumference. So that'll be 2 pi times the radius. So if I want the volume for all of them, I will be adding up the 2 pi times the radius times the height times the thickness. So if you look at your steps now, we can see that our first step, just like the other types, is to graph the boundaries, label the intersections, draw a representative strip that is parallel this time to the axis of revolution, and label its endpoints. And then we are also going to have to choose an adjacent point that is on the axis of revolution, because we need to know the radius of that cylindrical shell. We need to know how far away our representative strip is from the axis. So we're not going to get that unless we've labeled a point on the axis. Once we've done that, we can sketch a representative skinny cylindrical shell. And then we will use that strip to determine the circumference and height. You'll need the radius, the height, and the thickness, which will be that dx or dy, depending on whether you cut perpendicular to the x-axis or perpendicular to the y-axis. Once we've done that, we'll write the volume of the skinny slice. And it'll be the form circumference times the height times the thickness. Then we will integrate that. And notice again, you can pull that 2 pi out in front since it's a constant. And that way, you'll avoid parentheses issues on the inside. So let's look at example 1. With example 1, we want to find the volume of this solid when y equals cosine x in quadrant 1 
is revolved about the y-axis. So our first step was to graph our boundaries, which we've done. We want to label all the intersections. So in this case, we'll have one at 0, 1, and another one at pi over 2, comma 0, and a third one at 0, 0. Our third step is to draw a representative strip that is parallel to what we're rotating around. Since we're rotating around the y-axis, we want to be parallel to that y-axis. Now notice that this strip is perpendicular to the x-axis, so that tells us our volumes are going to be written in terms of x. So we will now label the endpoints along with an adjacent point that is on the axis of rotation. So we've got one point here who shares an x-coordinate with the bottom point. And then to get the y-coordinates, we need to look to see what the curve is that the point resides on. So this particular point is on y equals 0, so the y-coordinate will always be 0. This point here is on the curve cosine of x. And now we have a choice. I've put the point here, but you can actually put the third point anywhere on this axis that you want. So in this particular case, it might be simpler to have the point down here, because we already have this point labeled, and we'll be able to tell very quickly how far away this point is from this one. So our next step is to draw a sample slice. And I'm actually going to do it on the picture because it'll make it a little simpler. So now our goal is to find the volume of this one little cylindrical slice. And though I did a bad job drawing the picture, we've got a hair of thickness right along the top. So if we unroll it, we're going to need the height, we're going to need the radius, and we're going to need a 2 pi. So we know it's a 2 pi times a radius times a height. And because we sliced with respect to x, we will multiply by dx, and we're eventually going to add up all of the volumes of the individual slices. So looking here, the height is probably the easier one to find. The height will be a vertical distance. That's a difference between y-coordinate, so it'll be the top y-coordinate minus the bottom y-coordinate. That means my height is a cosine of x minus a 0. My radius will be the difference between this line and the axis. I want to know the distance between those. So because I have these two points labeled, I can just do the x-coordinate minus the x-coordinate. It is a horizontal distance. Lastly, I need to put my limits on. The limits come from the furthest left this strip can go in the original region, which is 0, to the furthest right I can go in the colored region, and that will be a pi over 2. If I finish this up, I'll have a 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of an x times a cosine of x. Now this particular problem you will not be able to do by hand, so I will allow a calculator, and you can get an answer that is either exact, pi over 2 minus 1, or the approximate, which would be 0.571. With example 2 now, our first step is to graph the boundaries, which are done. Second step is to label the intersections. And again, we're looking at the intersections on the original region. So this is before it has been rotated. One of the errors that people make is they want to use boundaries that come from the region after it's been rotated. And that can be a little confusing. So we've labeled our three intersection points on the colored region, and now we want to rotate this about the line x equals negative 1. So our job is to draw a strip that is parallel to what we're rotating around, and then we need to label the points. So because I have cut perpendicular to the x-axis, the thickness of this is going to be a dx. That means my integral will be in terms of dx. So everything needs to be labeled in terms of x. That means the y-coordinate here on this bottom curve, which is the less steep one, needs to be in terms of x, and it is. So this y-coordinate on the bottom is a 1 minus x. Similarly here on the top curve, which is the steeper one, we need y isolated and in terms of x, which it is. And then we need to rotate it around this point. So we need to find a point on here that is easy to label. So we have two options. I can either do the top point that would have the same y coordinate as this top point here, or I could choose the bottom point. Since neither of them is any better than the other, I'm going to choose this top one. 
and I will label the y coordinate as 2 minus 2x, and then the x coordinate is going to come from the line, which is negative 1. Once I have this, then I can draw my cylindrical shape that has just the hair of thickness that is dx. So in order to write the volume of that one slice, I need the 2 pi and the radius and the height. So the height is the vertical distance between these two points. So it is this y coordinate minus this y coordinate. The radius is the distance between the strip and the axis of revolution. So if I do this distance, it's a horizontal distance. So I will take my right x coordinate minus my left x coordinate, which is x minus a negative 1. Then I'll add them all up, and I need to think about my limits. The limits come from the original region. The furthest left I can go with this strip is here, where the x coordinate is 0. The furthest right I can drag that strip is to this edge, where the x coordinate is 1. Once I'm here, I can simplify. I have a 2 minus a 1 is a 1. I have a negative 2x plus an x is a minus x. Finish that up. Here's one that you could actually do by hand. I'll get a 1 minus an x squared. And then I can use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 to answer the question posed by this symbol. What did I take the derivative of with respect to x that gave me this? And the answer is an x minus an x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1. Plug in the 1 and plug in the 0. Simplify, we get a 2 pi times a 2 thirds, or a 4 pi over 3. With our third and final example, we want to find the volume of the region formed by rotating this region that's bounded by the parabola y equals x squared, the vertical line x equals 2, and the x-axis about this line y equals 5. So to set this up, we want to think about first graphing the region, which is done, labeling our intersections. So we've got a 0, 0, a 2, 0, and a 2, 4. And then we want to draw our strip that is parallel to what we're rotating around. So unlike the first two examples, this time we have drawn a horizontal strip. Because it's horizontal, that means everything is going to be in terms of y. So that tells me I need to label these points in terms of y, which we could also tell because the y coordinate is the same on both of them. The x coordinate for this right point is on the curve x equals 2. So x will always be 2 as the strip moves through the region. For this point, we're on the curve y equals x squared. And I need to get the x coordinate written in terms of y. So I come back to the curve. Since y equals x squared, that means x will be plus or minus root y. Because I'm on the right side of the parabola as opposed to the left, and my x coordinate is a positive number, I will use the positive root. Lastly, I need to choose a point that is on the axis of revolution. And I have a choice. I can either put the point here, or I can put the point here. I'm going to choose to put it here because the x coordinate is much easier to read. The y coordinate comes from the curve y equals 5. Once I'm here, I'm ready to sketch my sample cylinder. Now that I have my sample cylinder drawn, I know that I need to write the volume of that sample slice. So that volume will be a 2 pi times a radius times a height. Well, the radius is the distance from the strip to the axis of revolution. And I have this point and this point labeled. Notice that they are vertically apart from each other. That means we're looking at a difference in y coordinates. So I'll take the top y coordinate minus the bottom y coordinate and get a radius of 5 minus y. If I now want the height, that is the length of this strip. And that is a horizontal distance. So it will be a difference between an x coordinate and an x coordinate. And I take the right x minus the left x. Once I have the volume written for one slice, then I will add them all up to get the volume of the entire solid. So in order to get the limits, I need to think about the lowest that this strip can go, which will be the y-coordinate of 0. 
and the highest this strip can go in the region. Now some people will want to put a 5 here because I see that labeled point, but notice that we run out of the colored region up here when x is 4, so that's my upper limit. Again, this is one that I can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to finish. So we would distribute, get a 10 minus a 5 root y minus a 2y plus a y to the 3 halves. I can do an antiderivative now and get 2 pi times, what did I take the derivative of with respect to y that gave me 10? It's a 10y. 5y to the 1 half will be 5y to the 3 halves over 3 halves minus 2y squared over 2 plus y to the 5 halves over 5 halves evaluated from 0 to 4. Well, we know that the 2 pi can be out in front. We know if I plug in 0, I'm going to just get 0. So the interesting stuff is the 4. That will give me a 40 minus, this is a 10 thirds, times the square root of 4, which is 2 cubed, gives me 8, minus a 4 squared, plus a 2 fifths times the square root of 4, which is 2, raised to the fifth power, is a 32. Finish this up, and you get 152 fifteenths, or 304 pi over 15.